Today we're going to be talking about Pilot Owner and the Ice Killer. Now, I know this sounds like the title of a mystery novel, uh, but it isn't. It's unfortunately, we're going to be talking today about an accident that happened uh, in Chamberlain Municipal Airport in South Dakota in December of 2019. The National Transport Safety Board has just come out with the accident report, so we're going to sort of do an analysis on this and see what preventative measures could have been put in place to have avoid this and what you can do as a pilot owner or even just a, an aircraft owner, what you can do, and what you can learn from this accident. My name is Fabrizio Poli, welcome to BusJet TV. Lots of content on here about business aviation and why the private jet, the private aircraft is a, is a business tool and not a luxury item as I like to call it. So let's, uh, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, I encourage you to subscribe and let's get into the meat of this accident. So um, there was a whole family and some friends flying on this airplane. They flew in for a weekend to do some hunting and uh, off they went to the airport uh, on the Monday uh, to uh, uh, take their flight home back to Idaho and the airplane was covered in snow and ice. So they spent three hours clearing the snow and ice off the airplane. Uh, this airport is an uncontrolled airport. Um, so uh, the airplane had also been parked outside for the whole weekend. Uh, they landed on Friday, it, they were departing on, on Monday. So it had been accumulated a lot of frost, ice, uh, snow, ice on, on the airplane. So they cleared as much as they could off and uh, they underestimated ice. Now ice is a killer and you only need even a, a millimeter of ice on a big airplane like a 747 or a DC-9 or whatever and that can cause the airplane to stall on takeoff. So imagine on a small Pilatus PC-12 and this is exactly what happened here. Now uh, there were 12 people on board, um, apparently there was a couple of people that weren't even seated um, so the airplane was slightly overweight, about 100 pounds overweight, but it's not the overweight situation that caused the stall. It's more the ice on the airplane that caused it. So um, they took off and just after takeoff a few hundred feet, uh, the pilot lost control because the airplane stalled and it's got a big engine on there. And according to the uh, pilot training um, uh scenarios of the PC-12. When you are training to be tight rated on the PC-12, you do what's called a power on stall, which is a stall at full power. So it's simulating a stall on takeoff. And the PC-12 loses 700 feet on a stall like this. Now 700 feet is massive. You imagine you're just at two, 300 feet above the runway. This thing stalls, it smashes into the ground, which is exactly what happened. And out of the 12 people on board, only three survived. So, uh, and a lot of the people on board were children and young, young people as well. Uh, so it's sad to see this happen. But what could have, uh, this could have been avoided. And uh, unfortunately, most crashes that happen in private aviation um, are the pilot owners that crash. These are people that uh, fly for a hobby. They decide they're going to buy a high performance aircraft like the PC-12 or a Honda Jet or uh, a, a Citation CJ-3 or whatever it may be. And they decide they're going to get trained and fly this airplane themselves. Now, uh, training to qualify on the airplane is not enough. You have to if you're going to be flying these high performance aircraft, if you're going to be flying aircraft in general as a hobby, um, you're not going to be flying as often as a professional pilot does. Now, the airline guys, I was flying for the airlines. I was flying anywhere between 700 to 900 hours a year. Uh, that's a lot of flying. And um, uh, private jet um, guys usually fly less. They usually fly about two to 300 hours a year. So the airline guys are flying a lot more. They get a lot more training. Uh, but if you are a pilot owner, you may only be flying 100, 120 hours a year, but you don't have the training that the airline pilots have had, which you have to go through in order to be able to fly an airliner. You have to go through the ropes. I mean, I it took me a while to get to the uh, first airline. I flew private jets. I did air ambulance, did all that. Uh, I, I joined the first regional airline. I had about 800 hours. I flew a Dornier 328 turboprop. Then I went on to the 328 jet. And then eventually when I hit about just over 2,000 hours, I started flying Boeing 737s. So it took a while to get there and it was it was progressive as I got there and I learned a lot on my way up. Um, and that's really, really important. And this is unfortunately what does not happen with the pilot owner. So if you are a pilot owner, I do encourage you to get more training. Um, now I did a really, uh, really interesting article in Abbaya Magazine. I write for Abbaya Magazine every month. So uh, check the link below. This is the one that's just come out recently. I did an article uh, interview and we also did an interview here on BizJet TV with Don Catalano, he's from New York. Uh, here's Don, he's a proud owner of a Honda Jet. He flies himself. And um, here he is on delivery. And um, oops, <laughs> there we go. And there's myself there down at the bottom. So um, yeah, so uh, talking to Don, and we've had lots of conversations. Um, he's followed my advice. 
He goes for extra training every year. He goes to the simulator twice a year instead of once, which is the minimum requirement. He does upset recovery training. He does um, uh, has professional pilots fly with him from time to time to coach him, to help him to improve. Uh, and he always makes sure that his standards are high. And that's the way you need to go about it because these people here on the PC-12, they didn't realize the danger of ice. Now, uh, you need to be aware of certain hazards. And, uh, you know, and research is being done continuously on uh, things. I mean, as pilot, professional pilots, you, you're doing courses every three or four months. Uh, updates on new discoveries about thunderstorms and icing and, you know, uh, crosswinds and, uh, you know, microbursts and all this sort of stuff that happens as well as information on your particular aircraft and incidents that have happened so a pilot, professional pilot is con constantly learning in order to always stay safe so as a pilot owner you need to be approaching uh, flying your airplane as if you were a professional and so in order to do that you need to be training with professionals have professionals fly with you a few times a month uh, you know to give you some instruction and updates and that read as well as much as you can um, go to the simulator as often as you can um, get yourself a flight simulator at home and we'll be doing uh, some videos on flight simulators in the next few weeks. Uh, we've got some interesting hardware that's been sent here to BizJet TV and we're going to be demonstrating that and showing you how that can also help you increase your knowledge um, and that in particular when you're going into sort of uh, you know, difficult airports like Aspen for example in the middle of the uh, mountains uh, you want to be familiar uh, because unfamiliarity unfamili is what can kill sometimes uh, and I think awareness in this case was what was 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 the killer uh, they weren't aware. They thought that just clearing the airplane for three hours uh, was enough. They don't realize you need de-icing equipment. You need de-icing fluids and that. And, and this is what should have been done here. You, they should have either stayed on the ground or de-iced the airplane. But my understanding is the de-icing equipment was not available at the airport. So with the weather conditions, well, first of all, I don't think they should have even flown in there because you know what the weather's like. We're talking December. December in South Dakota, it snows. So you, you've got to be careful. If you're going to go in somewhere, make sure you're flying into an airport that has the icing equipment. And as my rule of thumb as an airline captain, it's always, it's always to de-ice if you're in doubt. Um, I know it costs money, but you know, it, safety is really, really important. So that's really the big lesson from here. If you are a pilot owner, get more training, be aware of these things. Ice can kill, even just a millimeter on the wing can kill. I know, and sometimes that millimeter, you can't even see it. So you've got to really read your weather report, talk to other pilots, look around, see what the conditions are. Um, and if you are in doubt, de-ice. That's really the lesson from there. So if you haven't subscribed to Budget TV, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel. Check this next video out about charter prices and why charter prices are on the increase. That's all from Fabrizio Parley on this episode of BizJet TV, and I'll see you on the next one.